Welcome to The Writer's Dream. This is a show where authors have the opportunity to talk about their books, how they write them, how they publish them, and how they market them. We have a Facebook page called The Writer's Dream. Imagine that. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or you would like to be on the show, please address it to The Writer's Dream Facebook page. We are also on YouTube. We have about 120 interviews so far. So if you are a reader or a writer and you're looking for writing tips or good books to read, visit our YouTube channel and you will see many, many interesting local authors. Today's guest is Darren Sardelli, and Darren Sardelli is the CEO Whoa. of Laugh-A-Lot Poetry. He is probably the best children's poet on Long Island. Wow, that's a huge <laughs> statement. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome, that's, Darren. Oh, so, I'm Darren. blown away by that. Darren has written books such as Peter Peter Pizza Eater, Galaxy Pizza and Meteor Pie, Dinner with Dracula. I have, I have poems in a lot of those books. Um, but Galaxy Pizza and Meteor Pie, that's, that's my book that I wrote. And then the other books you mentioned, I have poems in them with other authors. Oh, okay. I do, yeah. So okay. All these books on stage today. And, and this pile of books is all yours. Yeah, pile of books. Um, it's books, it's magazines, it's a CD that um, I wrote lyrics to, uh, to songs. For a, yeah, tell us about the CD. Oh, the CD. Um, okay, absolutely. Um, it was kind of awesome. I went to a school in Connecticut, and the guy on the cover, his name is Al DeCant, and he was the, print, he's the, he was the principal of the school. So um, when I went to the school, you know, I did a few assemblies, and I mean, the kids were just going crazy for my poetry. He, um, you know, he really liked two of the poems. So he wanted to take two of the poems and put them to music and put them on the CD. And um, it was great, because the second time I was at that school, a couple years later, he snuck up behind me with his guitar as I was doing my assembly, and he, and he started playing um, the music, and he started singing uh, you know, the lyrics to, to my poem that he put music to, which, and, the, and the kids, they went nuts. I mean, the, um, you know, the teachers were just like, they were smiling, and they were floored. It was just one of the coolest assemblies, one of the best memories that I have. So uh, thank you, Al DeCant. So you do, you, you really do a lot of things with your poetry. So tell us how you got into poetry. Okay, how I got into poetry. I started writing poetry when I was about 19, 20 years old. I was a junior in college. And before that, I had no interest whatsoever in poetry, in writing. writing. Even reading was like, you know, it was like pulling teeth. Um, you know, like my mom always tried to get me to read when I was younger, and I just did not want to do it. I, I'm the type of kid that was always outside on my bicycle, playing hockey with, with my friends at the park. Um, you know, anything, you know, outdoors, sports related, you know, video games, you know, that was me when it came to doing homework, reading and writing, wasn't the, you know, yeah. wasn't crazy about it, but I did do it and it did get, help me get into a great college. And, um, I did get, you know, once I was in college when I was 19, I had this, uh, actually I had a dream very, uh, <laughs> like, like Martin Luther King. No, I, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was on a rowboat. You know, I was fishing in the, in the middle of a lake, and it was a, in the middle of the forest, very peaceful, some, summertime. And uh, I'm, I'm fishing, and, you know, I reel up my line, and on the hook, there's this big black box. So I'm, like, looking at this box. I'm just thinking in my dream what, you know, I caught a box. I open up the box, and this big neon green light shoots out of the box, and everything in my dream becomes green. You know, the sky becomes green. The sun is green. You know, the boat is glowing green. And in this box is this giant key. So I'm kind of like looking at this key, like, what is this key to? Wow. You know, and I pick up this key, and right before I wake up, I hear a voice. I, I, re I heard a voice that said, writing is the key to my future. And it's, it's nuts, you know? I was about 20 years old. Couldn't be much clearer, could it? Couldn't be much clearer, <laughs> but it, it was so strange because before that time, I didn't write as a hobby. I really had little interest. But, you know, from within a week, I picked up, after that dream, I picked up some books by Shel Silverstein and Dr. Seuss, and I read their poetry, I read their stories, and just the way they rhymed and made everything funny, that just spoke to me, kind of opened up something inside of me. So I started writing in that direction, writing in that style, and I just, I, I had so much fun doing it. And from that day on, I just kept, I just kept writing. So, do you remember your first poem? My first poem, it was about, it was a, I do, it was about a king who... who do you, can, you, can you recite it's it? It's funny, I, I, I don't have, it's on my website, but laughalotpoetry.com, but I don't have it memorized. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it means about a king... Sorry to put you on the spot. No, it's okay. I have a lot of my poems memorized, though. I don't have that one memorized. Um, it's about a king who liked to play checkers, and, you know, it's kind of, kind of the story of how checkers was, 
invented in my, you know, in my story. Now, what did you major in in college? I got my degree in business management. Ah, well, that's why you're so successful at what you do. Well, that, I, that's one of the reasons. Because your full-time job is really school visits. I've, I've, I've made school visits my full-time job. Okay, so it. tell us about how, that and how you manage that. How I, well, I started, my first school visit was in 2004. Um, before that, my, uh, my brother graduated from college. So my parents were having this huge, you know, backyard graduation party for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that at that time, I, you know, I, was, I was writing poems. I wasn't published yet, but I had, uh, you know, I just left some poems on the table, you know, which I would, at that point in time, I would normally not do. You know, I was kind of embarrassed that people, you know, read my poetry, mm -hmm. and I was sort of embarrassed to actually recite poetry, but one of my mom's, you know, best friends, her name is Ann Schaefer, you know, she uh, pr was a principal at a school. So she happened to walk by, this, walk by the table, you know, pick up the poems. She's reading them, you know, she's laughing. She's like, Rosemary, you know, that's my mom's name, Rosemary. Like, who wrote these poems? These are great. You know, I, oh, you know, Darren's writing some poetry. Oh, you know, like, Darren, you got to. When is he going to get a job? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, you know, and, and Darren, you got to come to our school. These poems are great. You got to read them to the kids. Uh, I don't, th I can't do that. You're like, no, 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 they're going to love this. They, they really will. So she convinced me to come, you know, she gave me 10 minutes in each classroom. And I just had you know, just a bunch of poems just written you know, mm -hmm. you know, on pages. And I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just reading the poems to the kids. And I read the first poem, and yeah, you know, kids are laughing. OK. I read the second poem. You know, there's more laughter in the room. And, and the teacher's laughing also. You know, by the third poem, I mean, like one kid almost fell off his chair. Hooked. Yeah, I mean, it's like they wanted to hear more. And I was like, I had no idea what was going on. I really did not know, you know, I did not know what was going on. But you've, you've evolved this presentation into something I have. more educational. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it started, but that's how, that's how it started. And then, you know, after going to, I, you know, I saw that the classroom, I mean, the kids were having fun, they enjoyed it, so I started to do more classrooms. And then, you know, the more classrooms I did, I was able to kind of, I, I took what worked and pushed away what didn't work, and I put together this interactive poetry show that I do in schools. I have, um, right now I have assemblies, you know, for I have a pre-K assembly, I have a, a, an assembly for the entire kindergarten, first, second grade, an assembly for the entire third, fourth, and fifth grade, um, assemblies for a sixth, seventh, eighth grade, all different assemblies, but you know, very interactive, where I can you know, just kind of get on their level and get them excited about poetry. And you really came into this at an opportune time because your music is rap music, which is a <laughs> form of poetry. Rap, it, it is. I mean, no, sure they is. wouldn't acknowledge that. They wouldn't say it's a form but of poetry, is. but it absolutely is. Yeah. It, it completely is. I mean, some of it is great. Some of it's mm -hmm. revolting. <laughs> but <laughs> some of it is, but, you know, but when you look at it, um, you know, the way some of the rappers put their words together, it's really impressive. Even if the message may not be the best, the way they, you know, yes. the words, the, structure the way it. they make it flow, I mean, it's really, mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. pretty smart. Yeah, when I can understand the words and I listen to it, you know, I, I, it's obviously a form of poetry. It is a form, Absol it absolutely is. Sure. Sure. So um, you, you must have quite a following. But how many schools do you do a year? How many schools? Probably between 40 to 50 schools a year. So I, and I'm all over. I'm all over Long Island, you know, upstate New York, and New Jersey, and Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. The, fur the furthest I've been so far is Austin, Texas. Wow. So it's, <laughs> that's pretty right. awesome. Yeah. It's amazing, you know? Yeah. And just, I mean, the kids and just teachers, just they respond so well to my poems. And I think they respond so well because I write about things that they relate to, you know, yes. things that, that, that they really understand. I mean, my stuff is it's really, it's, it's universal. Can I can I read this poem, the, the parent teacher conference? Is guess. your mother a teacher? My my mom is not a well. I mean, she's not a teacher, but well, every know, every mother's a teacher. When you have five kids, I mean, yes, I mean, she's in a sense, she's definitely a teacher. Because I think this is really funny. This is the parent teacher conference, right? And it's at the parent teacher conference. My father made a scene. He scared my fifth grade teacher with his mask from Halloween. She showed him all my science grades and said she was concerned, but he just stuck his tongue out when my teacher's back was turned. He drew a monster on the board and claimed it was her twin. He even shook her soda, which exploded on her chin. My angry teacher crossed her arms and said, this meeting's done. I now see where he gets it from. You act just like your son. That's like that saying, insanity is, inher is hereditary. You get it from your children. Yeah. 
pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, that's an old saying. Hmm. But that's that's a uh, an example of, and of course, obviously, um, having been a teacher for many years and doing hmm. parent teacher conferences, which is our least favorite thing to of do. Of course, I know it is. <laughs> I hear a lot of stories about it in yes. teachers' lounges. I I'm sure because you always get. Uh, a parent who is unhappy with you, and uh, you are unhappy usually with the kid. <laughs> so right. Not a good combination. Not the best combination. No. So, but it makes for a great poem. Yeah, it, you know? it certainly does. So, it does. So tell me about, um, what's your favorite poem to read? My favorite poem, it's actually an unpublished poem. Uh, this poem is called, If I Were a Door. Now, Linda, have you ever dreamed about being a door? No, that's mm. not been one of my not, aspirations. No, it hasn't been, right? <laughs> But what I do with my poetry when I write, I like to take an ordinary object and find ways to make it exciting in my poetry. So if I was at an assembly right now, you know, I would say, okay, boys and girls, you see that, you see that plain, ordinary door over there? What's one thing we can do to make that door more exciting? So, you know, a girl might raise her hand and say, we could decorate it with my favorite stickers. You know, another you know, boy might raise his hand and say, we can make it a candy door. So every time you open it, we can eat candy, you know? So, and, 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 and that's how I get students to open up their imagination uh, during my, that's the one way I do, do it in my assemblies. So this is how I would make my life exciting if I were a door. If I were a door, I'd swing through the night. I'd fill people up with terror and fright. I think it'd be fun to squeak like a mouse, to make people think there's mice in their house. I twist my own knob, I'd slam myself shut. I take out my hinges and act like a nut. I think it'd be cool to jam up my lock and make people jump whenever I knock. If I were a door, you'd be out of luck. As soon as you're near me, I'd fake being stuck. There'd be lots of pranks that I could explore. Oh, life would be perfect if I were a door. So that's how I make a door exciting. See, for me, the door would have to open up to something. Mm -hmm. See, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be a door that opened up to adventure. Adventure. Well, let's let's expand on that. What kind of adventure? Because this is what I do. I get them to expand on you know their ideas. Well, well the door would open up to the driveway with mm -hmm. my favorite kind of car, uh -huh. which would be a Mercedes Benz Ooh. sports coupe, <laughs> and we would be not even checking the GPS, but we'd be heading for an interstate mm -hmm. that would take us to one of the, I don't know, national parks. Okay. Or we could take it north to a ski resort. That's awesome. Because we'd have to go to Labrador with the weather we're having. <laughs> Gotta do it. <laughs> see? See, that's, that's my kind of door. All of a sudden, see what this door poem has opened up? Or I could into? use the door to slam the door on the things I don't like in life. Oh, I like that, though. You could do that. Enough. I'm done. Goodbye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Door slamming. Moving on. Right. So tell me about, since you are kind of a marketing major almost, you know, business major, kind of what, do you, what do you do to market? What do I do to market? That is a, that's a great question. I, I'm not sure if this technique is the best technique, but what I do is, you know, before the school year starts, I go on all of the school. Um, I just... Spend a lot on of time their websites. on the computer, going on the school websites, finding out who the PTA people are, because the PTA, they book the programs. So I'll either call them directly or shoot them an email um, and, you know, just introduce myself, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what I do, you know, get their email address, you know, send them a, my school visit flyer. And so it's a lot of legwork. It's a lot of, a lot of phone calls. It's a lot this of emails. Is, this is basically what know? we do with Long Island Children's Writers and Illustrators for the author illustrator. That's what we do. Basically That's the exactly same thing. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, I don't have any extravagant marketing techniques, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I, I, th I think I'm just, I'm very personable. Um, and just with that. <laughs> do you find, well. do you find that personal contact with these people is more effective than? In email? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I think emails sometimes just sometimes get, sometimes get, emails get lost they and get deleted o overlooked and right deleted yeah. and yeah. Well, yeah when you have a conversation with a person you know you tell them a little bit about what you do you know my name's Darren Sardelli you know I'm a, I'm a poet and I come into schools and I you know get children excited about poetry I open up their imaginations I get them to tap into their creativity you know it's, and that's all common it's, core it's, 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 a, it's, a, it, it's all common core it, it is that's you have to say you know? that to use those two words common, common this core. is common core. I forget I forget to use that but yes it, but what I it do, is common core it is common core and, and aside from my assemblies after my assemblies you know we I do writing workshops 
where you know they're, they're smaller, smaller groups. But you know, with the younger grades, we, you know, we write a poem together as a group. You know, just taking all their ideas and just kind of putting them in a poem, and we, you know, I structure a poem in front of them, and you know, show them how to you know structure each line. And we do we do a, a rhyming poem, and then we tie it um, tie it all together at the end with something. You know, usually there's a punchline involved. Right. So something surprising. You know, oh. which is which is how how I write. I like to have you know surprise. Would you like to hear a poem with a surprise ending? In February of 2017, if we're all here, yes. Nassau Reading Council is, has asked me to do a workshop on how authors use their books. Okay. So if you would like to be on that panel. That would be great. Because oh. it's all Common Core. I, I accept the invitation. Common Core. There we go. I don't think they're paying us, but what the heck. Okay. I really never know. Yeah, it's all right. You know, we, we do it because we love it. It's yeah. all about, it's, it, it's yeah. passion. Yeah, it's if, love you, if you do. don't do it because you love it, if you don't do writing because you love it, it, it really is a chore. It's, yeah. I, so do you have a traditional publisher? Do I have a traditional publisher? Um, well, there's one, one. You have a lot of different publishers, well, yes? There's one company. Uh, it's called Meadowbrook Press. This is the, the first publishing company I was, you know, I, I hooked up with in 2004. Um, got a guy by the name of Bruce Lansky. He owns the publishing company. Mm -hmm. Like he, it's small press? It's, no, it's, a, it's actually a pretty big publishing company. Okay. It, it, it's, it's huge. Um, it, it's in Minnesota. And I met him at a Barnes and Nobles at a, uh, you know, a book signing in New Jersey. And I just ha happened to have a bunch of my poems with me. Well, I, have, I brought a bunch of my poems with me. And I asked him, you know, after he, was, after he was done signing books, I introduced myself. You know, asked him if he could just read some of my poems. He asked me to read them. You know, there was a crowd there, so I read them to the crowd. And, you know, I mean, the kids were laughing, and the parents really liked it. And, you know, there was one kid who just laughed so hard, he actually you know, was drinking milk and shot milk out of his nose. <laughs> Which was, I mean, Bruce saw that and he was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Perfect. So, yeah, I mean, just from that, he, uh, this is the, the first, um, he said, you know, Darren, I, I love your poetry. You know, we're coming out with a book in about six months. It's just about done. But if we can squeeze two of the poems that you write tonight into this book, that would be phenomenal. So that's, and this is the book right here. So, so, so read them. I will. Okay. Well, my first, <laughs> my first published poem is called Don't Forget to Share. Don't Forget to Share. It goes like this. The parakeets are laughing. The fish are doing flips. The cats and dogs are dancing with ice cream on their lips. The birds and mice are singing. The snakes are having fun. A turtle is enjoying a hot dog on a bun. The crabs are all delighted. The toads are jumping high. A monkey just devoured a piece of pumpkin pie. The pigs are eating apples. The frogs are drinking punch. It's nice to see them sharing the pet shop owner's lunch. <laughs> That was um yeah that was that was 